great scourge will finally be destroyed. It's only... It's like that gentleman said, it's only 7.05. And there are plenty of people out here already. Hundreds of people. Let's go over and get a few people over here. How long you been waiting out here? Since uh, 10 to 4. 10 to 4. And who are you here to see? Jim Lee. All right. Obviously. <laughs> about my life I, 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 uh, I never really intended to become a comic book artist I went to college and got a degree in psychology and uh, I was actually a pre-med when I was there and, and something just didn't gel right and and uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> okay always love this cover uh, look at look at the whales too the texture for the whales is just really cool um, the gen 13 archives is a must own because it's your very best black and white source for anything early J. Scott Campbell. And uh, glad you could take a few minutes here to talk with us. Oh, no problem. I've uh, just got some, you know, some basic questions, uh, some things that a lot of it's probably been asked before, but right. uh, <laughs> I don't know if there's anything that hasn't been asked. Uh, I've, I've heard almost every single question you could probably come up with, but go ahead. I figure. See if you can shock me here. Okay, well, we're going to start up with, um, who came up with uh, the crossover? The uh, um, basically, Mark and I had been talking as early as last year about doing a project together where the characters, Cyberforce and Wildcats, interacted. and uh, But we were just doing miniseries at the time. We had scheduling problems, obviously. And uh, we really didn't have an opportunity to do something together until this year when we took both titles into regular series. And we decided since um, he was coming back with a new regular series and I was continuing sort of the mini series, we wanted to do a crossover to kind of give the re-releases some punch. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, that's really how it came about. Well, like you said in uh, Wildcats 5, it's like actually like issue one, but yeah, it is. I mean, it's a completely different storyline. I think some time has passed since the miniseries to issue five, but I just didn't want to start over with another issue one. Right. Uh, I feel like there's a certain amount of momentum you lose by starting over again. You know, you want to kind of break the Earth's, you know, sort of gravity and, and, and take off and really get rolling with the stories. And if you're continually doing issues one, two, three, and four, um, it's difficult to do that. Typically, first issues, you have to... Uh, you know, first issues follow a certain kind of structure because it's the first issue and you have to uh, tell the readers about the characters and, and introduce things in, in a very logical, sequential way. Um, with an issue five, you can just go ahead and assume that the, you know, a lot of the readers right. are familiar with the characters and get into a, a, another story that can have a different and more interesting structure than typical first issues. I think first issues are very difficult to... This pack feels a little heavier. Wow, cool looking Void. Void just works so well when it comes to, to Chrome. We got we gotta hit those comments. We gotta see what, what comments are coming in. If all right, hold up. Let me let me just get to my comments. Boom. Okay. Sean Phillips. Very awesome pose there. Brian Silfries. Another Rich Johnson, Dave Johnson. Not Rich Johnson, Dave Johnson. What am I doing? Dave Johnson, Johnson and David uh, Pearson. Both very similar styles of this era. Very cool grifter. Like, th this is a cover worthy image for a trading card. Jason Raskin. Very cool. Very cool. Hell's Pot. Rick Mays. Uh, okay. Warblade here. Oh, we have our first bonus card, Refractor card, Demonite. Tony Harris. Uh, Tony Harris really came into prominence working uh, through Wildstorm for X Makina after coming off Starman. J. Sky Campbell here. This almost looks like a like a delays. We've lost some delays. And here we go.
aka Patters, Peter A. DeLuca here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me uh, just switch. Oh, okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, look, look, everyone, welcome to Wildstorm Wednesday. Are we a little blurry here? I'm Peter A. DeLuca, aka Pad, sometimes known as the eclectic one, the world sketchbook champion, your brother in arms, your, your obsessive comic book creator. How's everyone doing? I, I can't get this to, to focus, and it was crystal clear coming in from the uh, intro. What is happening? All right, so late evening. Cheers to all of you. Late evening broadcast. Why? Why are we late? We all know the 11 o'clock streams do very poorly. They do very poorly. But why do we do them? Why do we get, look? We keep it up to be consistent. We keep it up to be in practice. I'm moving. It's insane right now. My nine to five, you know, Philly's favorite IT consultant over here. The nine to five is I'm there early and I'm leaving between three to four every single day. Uh, a couple weeks out of the year when projects ramp up, when there's a lot of specs, when there's a lot of um. You know, just like you need the guy in the room. There's people there's coming and going. It's very busy. It's very crazy. It's high demand. But this is uh again, like this is a part of the process of the of the the deeper practice that I feel like when it comes to like producing comic books, I feel like that's a lot of what's missing. I can't I can't get over how blurry. I'm looking at this one lens here. How is that even possible? Right? It's got to be some of the uh, connection, right? I mean, it make it, it, it literally, I'm all over the place right here right now. I'm literally going to have to check on face on, uh, yeah, I can check right now on Facebook. Can I say Facebook? Because it should say you are live right now. And that's looking like, here we go. We're looking at the fifth dimension here. I want to say, I, I want to say it's not, it's clear. It's so blurry on my end. But everyone, yeah, so look, the, the nine of five co comes calling. You have to answer. But being corporate, being uh, heavy on communication, heavy on emails, all of that fun stuff. Well, <laughs> uh, we learn outside skill sets that we wouldn't learn just working on comic books. I feel like there is a pocket of comic book creators out there. I'm not going to name names. Maybe one day I will. A pocket of comic book creators out there that, like, I don't know how you say it. They, they're they one to be project managers. They're one to be... George Lucas's, Walt Disney, they they think they're Pixar. Uh, they think just because they pay for things, they can execute. Um, paying, look, look, I just went through a round of com, um, commissions today. A round of commissions. And immediately, because people are paid up front for me, uh, I got work back like within hours of just like excited, ready to go. Total Excellence, what are we doing? What's up, Total Excellence? Just remind me, I don't have my uh, my little logo up here. But don't forget to get these uh, trading cards, everyone. Right here. Uh, right there. No, this way. Oh, my God, this way. <laughs> get these trading cards, everyone. Please hit akapad.com. But, yeah, so, look, it's just, like, it's, it's a total avalanche of, a lot of stuff when it takes to make a comic book. This is why I like Wildstorm Wednesdays because it gives me a perspective of maybe what the possible height is with enough capital, okay, of what to expect when you do it all yourself. Now, Jim Lee, what, he's he built the business. Like it, I almost feel like Wildstorm was like a business first. And then these other characters with like different levels of popularity. But we have to remember Wildcats, pretty much a hit. Stormwatch, not a hit. That's so similar 
to Wildcats and Brigade, where almost like Brigade had so much more hype than around Stormwatch. And then uh, it was the Brigade Bloodstrike feud. So to compare the two, Wildstorm and Extreme, because you have to, Youngblood Brigade Bloodstrike was literally a three-headed team dragon created by Rob Liefeld. And you had about 30 characters in those three books alone. Jim Lee struggled until Gen 13 became a hit. Wildcats, a hit. It got streamlined into video game animation toys. Uh, Deathblow was really, like, Deathblow was the character that seemed for a stretch, to, uh, like, even artistically, to get Jim Lee's attention. And, you know, like, look, we give a lot of thank you to Tim Sale for continuing Deathblow. And then these other, like, solo characters, like, later, like, really resonated. One of them being Backlash. So, Extreme and Wildstorm, their ambitions were not to separate themselves from Marvel. It was to become independent themselves outside of Marvel and later to get folded back in. This is this is very clear. Some people think it's disingenuous if Wildstorm ever returns to Marvel, if Rob Liefeld ever returns to Marvel. Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, Eric Larson, Mark Silvestri, these guys never said they would never return. The only guy that really said it is Todd McFarlane. So we have these heroes reborn, okay? Now, previously, we, we spoke about what kind of started this, and I thought we would continue the Ash Kane trend here. Wildcast Ash Kane number five. To me, this is historic because this is like the finest of the Jim Lee Wild um, X Men era. Okay. This, I like from when it comes from an artistry sense, a pure illustration sense. This is the peak of what started in X-Men right here. We also got this, by the way. Because we're, we're going to start doing Extreme Studio streams. Okay? We are. We're going to try and get an intro for that uh, for those streams by uh, the one Rob Liefeld. We are. Cheers. Cheers to Rob Liefeld. Supreme. Ash King. Right? Thing is so freaking... Oh... It's it's something. It's it's something. It is a sign of the time. We will be doing the stream on this. That's some nice looking ash canes. Ain't that right, Ifki? So we have this return. This return to Marvel. Seemed to, I don't know, like pissed off a lot of people. A lot of people just weren't into it. No one was excited. People didn't like Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Avengers, especially Avengers, even at the time. They didn't like these books. Captain America. Captain America was on a a much his, like a very historic run by Mark Wade and Ron Garney, and the Heroes Reborn interrupted that. Everybody wanted that run to continue. It was a Sentinel Liberty storyline. So, th these two guys, they strike a good, healthy deal with Marvel. You get paid when you turn in the book. We're going to give you four bucks. This is very similar to Joe Quesada, Event Comics, Ash, Marvel Knights. But it's like, you, you do a book, we pay you. We have two marquee names. So there's just way more money, hype, attention, media. Everything is amped up. Run for 12, 13 issues. Jim Lee takes over the Rob Liefeld books, Captain America Avengers. They do this uh, city of industry, like crossover. <laughs> Rob Liefeld brings in Cable. Into Captain America, um, I believe that was issue five. Jim Lee crosses over Wildstorm Universe. 
in Fantastic Four 13. <laughs> Iron Man, you know, like, look, Iron Man's a little bit of a wash. No one really, you know, like, it was it was okay. It was cool. Kurt Busiak later takes it over with Sean Chen. They do a, uh, in my opinion, uh, up through is going back to Joe Quesada. Joe Quesada wrote four issues. Uh, the main versus the main in the armor, right? It was uh, main versus armor. Iron Man's armor becomes the sentient being that Tony Stark needs to fight. Joe, even Joe Casada in Iron Man at that point, volume three, writes a pretty good four issue run. Iron Man kind of comes back, uh, comic book wise. I don't think he faded. Kurt Busiak corrected a lot of problems but then like the movie so a lot of the momentum of tony stark and iron man from heroes reborn it jet fueled the the marvel proper 616 into the movie it really did just as of like what to pay attention to but here we go so what are these Got some trial by fire artwork here, by the way, kids. So what what exactly are we looking at? What is the shit? Let's get my ugly mug out of here, okay? Ifki, you gotta go. All right, so Ithki, thanks, thanks for the heads up, dude. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have to do this because here I, I don't know. Streamyard's been acting up, and I I can tell right now it's it's my connection, which is weird because I, yeah, I'm on Comcast business completely unlimited. So <laughs> the window right over here, okay, that microphone I can turn it on and turn it off. This one right here, I cannot. Okay. So every, we're, we're just going to have to do it this way. Which is fine. Because uh, we get more me in, in the background. Yes. <laughs> but it's good. Oh, thanks, bud. Yeah, yeah. So here, here's... A, I, I Don't worry. I didn't say too much. I was basically informing everyone why we're late. Which is... Uh, <laughs> I started with, with the uh, stream. I'm late because I was couch sofa sofa purchasing sofa buying with the babe for our new place uh we bought a very expensive sofa um look everything like moving forward we're going to get back into the the original look and feel of the aka pad content a uh, little bit more streamlined magazine bougie uh we're, we're still gonna have a fun production room but uh everything else around that it's going to be a different environment, and this this is a move I was planning uh, already like four years ago, and I had uh, a series of two year delays. But things look things are awesome. We're still like going to be doing all the streams and everything with the new place, but we can't do anything unless we have a baller sofa. So that that's what we were doing today. 
So here, here's the whole thing. These are not cheap, okay? These are practically new. I don't know if you guys can really see the spine here, okay? These are freaking new. So I almost don't want to, like, crack them. I've done previous streams on Iron Man. Uh, I, I highlighted Fantastic Four a few times. I believe Fantastic Four issue four with the Avengers is one of, like, Jim, Jim Lee was so good with his Fantastic Four work. But let's get into it. So the, why are these important? Well, these are important because we're getting a black and white representation of the, of the work, of the pages, of the illustration, of the inking. No word balloons, but we get like notes here, prologue, pages one through four. Look at Portesa. I love his the, the neck here. Like, can I just like bring that up? I love the mechanical neck and the traps. It is hotness. He was on another level. I made notes of this before. Portacio was in. The zone he was in, and this is a part of his wet work zone. There was a lot of negative space. Uh, he was very good, but just kind of being smart of putting his attention and his time in certain areas and just cutting up the page so the page looked full. Okay, a lot, a lot of people miss those details when they talk about Portacio. And here we go. We're getting some penciled pages. Very cool. You, uh, you know, like, it's nice to see also where these books were roughly three to four months out because that's when these ash canes went out. Yeah, you know, right? They go out to retailers, preview, order. This is where we are. You know, uh, you'll see there's very little incomplete here. But again, like as he, as smart as Portacio is with the white negative space, right? In contrast, he's really smart with the black negative space. I always liked his paneling. Look at this uh, these panels here, just like breaking and busting up. Very, you know, like I I only wish sometimes I could be that loose. You know, I'm so locked into drawing on top of the. Um, the comic book grid, or you know, the, the Alan Moore grid, as some people call it. We're drawing good hands here, we're drawing good guns. Look at this dude just getting his face like his he's like spitting out all this blood. Um, Pertasio, too, always strong with the hair, with the strains of hair, with the hair silhouettes. Really cool stuff, but we, but keep in mind, in this issue, we don't really get a ton of Iron Man. We get more of the intrigue. Look at the banana leaves here, right? These these are banana leaves, I believe. Look at the texture. Doesn't come up that well in, in the color version. I, these are almost like, I would say the background might be too dark. I believe the, the these pages are dark brown and purple. See how like how much I can even open it because it's 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 that new. Here we go. This girl's just throwing the drink right into Tony's face. Look at the detail of the splash. So freaking nice. We have Bruce Banner over here, right? And look at these blacks. Even here. It's like your eye almost follows the blacks into the negative space of panel four here. And even this, like you naturally follow this. I mean, could you imagine being brain and child like the writer? And, you know, like you, you have to tell the story. You have to weave it. And you get this delivered. And what if you have too much to say? I mean, you're challenged. Every word counts when you're. When you have layouts like this. And look at these blacks. This is a great panel here. Look at. With, with, with the cityscape. Just fading into the horizon. Really cool stuff. 
Yeah, and this is it. This is like where Tony Stark like kind of con- contemplates his uh, suicide. They they were good with building Tony Stark into a uh, tortured soul early, which did become a official Iron Man trope. I would say starting with Heroes Reborn. For the full story, see Iron Man 1 coming soon. Here we go. Uh, I would say this font could be the uh, Adam Warren comic crack font. And we got nothing on the back. Nothing on the back. People, I don't know. I just, there's so much about these I, I enjoy. I literally, I even enjoy like just holding them, like the, the form factor. got crypt daddy right here all right so this is it the coup de gras this is why we're here now here's the funny thing Every, everything about the jim lee fantastic four i love i prefer if i were to pick like six issues i would pick jim lee's fantastic four six issues over six consecutive issues of any of his x-men any of them I'm sorry. Now, X-Men 123, the adjectiveless X-Men, not an uncanny. 123, pretty damn good. But he's he's on another level 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 here. The point I was getting at, I never liked this cover though. <laughs> I never liked this cover. I don't know why. It's just you know what? <laughs> it just I mean, it has everything. He draws an amazing thing, has a great take on Reed Richards. Human Torch is Human Torch. Great action pose from Invisible Woman. You know, nice tease here in the background for Doctor Doom. It just doesn't click, and I don't know why. But look at this. The origin. This is all you need to know about the Fantastic Four in six panels. Shot off into space. Hit with the Gamma Gamma stuff. Uh, it hurts. It's twitching. And here we go. Flashback. Great panel here. This is like a Michael Bay Armageddon panel. Here we go. Countdown. Shoot off into space. Jim Lee at his like mechanical finest here. You know, he he, he can run with John Byrne with some of this stuff. And then here we go. We got we got Sue Storm working the room. Being a woman. Now, he did something very similar with Batman's Hush, where he made Vicky Vale a woman again when he did that. There's nothing wrong with introducing your characters as demon guy, big guy, smart guy, woman, Wolverine looking dude. Like, you know, like identify your characters. Here, we know, we know exactly everything that's happening. Great cityscape here, really nice clouds. Look at these clouds. And here we go. <coughs> we do have our, like, some, like, this is somewhat of, uh, he's used this news reporter a few times. This is not exactly the Image Universe news reporter, but it's, it's pretty close, okay? Awesome checkered floor background here. And then we get Ben Grimm and Johnny Storm. Ben Grimm in the Jeep, Johnny Storm in, in, in the Lambo, rocking and rolling, okay? Doing what these guys do. They are running, they're, they're just, it's Fast and Furious 3 over here, Tokyo Drift. Hey, look, the racing through the, the, house, the housing development in Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift is nothing less than legit. But here we go. We got Ben Grimm, Grimm reuniting with Sue Storm here. Uh, again, r- really good. Like economical silhouettes here. This this panel here is fantastic. Like even Scott Williams too. Like what he does, he break up the legs. It's almost like this, like like a duotone effect. I'm sorry, I'm trying to see how much of this shows up live, but my uh my live feed looks horrible right now. I mean, just Jim Lee is so good with these establishing shots here. His storytelling and his movement, it, it's its some of his best. He pulls away the camera, pull, like shows us negative space, 
blocks in the panels. You know, like his paneling is so freaking dynamic here. And we get our little spots of action. Johnny Storm being being a dick, flipping people over, hitting people with poles. But it just looks good. It looks good because it's Jim Lee's action. We have Ben Grimm and Reed Richards held up here. And then here we go. Ready? We're going to get the blast off. Sue Storm roundhousing a dude. Just really cool stuff. I mean, and you, everything's identified. You know this is Sue Storm. You know this is Johnny Storm. Reed Richards kissing his lady. And here we go. They're going to make the launch. Right? Because, like, there, there's a whole intrigue. There's espionage. There's, there's Dr. Doom interfering with the actual launch. And they fight their way onto the spaceship, which makes it even more tragic. They added a great element for the Heroes Reborn Fantastic Four, which is... They made the origin of the Fantastic Four a little bit more tragic because they broke through a wall to get onto that ship. And we all know what's coming. We all know what's coming. There we go. Ship blasts off. I mean, and Scott Williams too here. Like some of the, the whiteout effects are just really cool. Really cool. Shooting off into space. We have double 90s moons here. Everyone, everyone, double 90s moons. Relax. And then here we go. They get shot into space. We have a representation of the gamma radiation. And there we go. Well, for Fantastic Four, dynamic conclusion. Fantastic Four number one, coming to a store near you. Nothing on the back. Which is, which is a little bit funny because here, right? I mean, it's, it, it's like this came out way before these two. Don't waste the back. <laughs> so, everyone, if you do want to help and support, my love for Ash Canes echoes into my Uzi Susie comic book. Now, we're still dealing with different types of payments via through, like, WooCommerce. It looks like the best form... Of uh, payment we can do with WooCommerce at the time, just to kind of before we really start pushing the website hard, is going to be PayPal, either PayPal portal or pay with PayPal or pay with Venmo. Okay. Um, we're working on uh, a portal for any credit card right there on the screen. Just pay, like, you know, so bear with me. But here we have Uzi Susie. First and second printing right here. Right? How much fun is that? But, you, like, you can see, but I don't waste my bags. <laughs> but a lot of the lessons I learned by, by getting these, uh, yeah, I echo into Uzi Susie. So, everyone, really, thanks for hanging out. Another Wildstorm Wednesday for, for the books. Um. Hopefully, like again, like it's it's touch and go with the audio. Um, we're we're gonna be working on try by fire, Indiegogo updates coming soon. Uh, solid Uzi Susie updates coming. Uh, Uzi Susie two should have been to the press, uh, last week, but you know, like again, moving, scrambling, still post COVID stuff. Uh, is just a lot. Okay. Uh. We're still fighting, still plowing forward, a.k.a. Pad Army. I love you. Thanks for hanging out.